Hi there, this is Vadim, and in this video, I would like to get you ready for the employment assessment test. As you might be well aware, organizations nowadays would like to make sure that they hire the most qualified candidate. This is why they use pre-employment hiring exam to make sure a candidate is prepared to succeed on the job. There are various assessment test questions employers use based on the job candidate might be applying for. The examples are IQ and aptitude questions, logical reasoning questions, math reasoning, numerical reasoning, analytical skills questions, and a lot of others. In this video, I am going to share with you some examples of the questions we frequently see on the test. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's look at the very interesting question which really makes you think. You're presented with three shapes and the fourth shape is missing. You need to select the missing shape out of four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look at the pattern of shapes to see if you can come up with the solution. On my end, I'm not gonna delay it and I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you think differently, please make sure to share your answer in comments. As you might have guessed, the key is to define the pattern. And pattern consists of multiple elements. Pattern defining items are circles, triangle, and checks. They look like Latin symbol V. If you look closely at the outer circle, it's filled with triangles and those checks, which are moving clockwise. The inner circle also has smaller circles inside. Let's name our items in the original pattern as item 1, item 2, item 3, and then the missing item we will name item 4. This will help us to define the pattern. Number of circles increments by 1 in items 1 through 3. For example, item 1 has 2 circles, item 2 has 3 circles, 1, 2, and 3, and then item 3 has 4 circles, which means that item 4 should have 5 circles. Well, guess what? I was so excited to select the final answer just based on this finding, but then I noticed that all choices A, B, C, and D, they all have five small circles inside. Which leads us to conclusion that number of checks between triangles defines the final answer. If you look closely, number of checks alternates from 2 in item 1 to 3 in item 2, then back to 2 in item 3, and should probably be 3 in item number 4. This is why the correct answer is choice B, because it has 3 checks in between triangles. Let's look at why other choices are incorrect. Choice A only has 2 checks in between triangles. Choice C has a pattern of 9 checks in between 2 triangles at the top and at the bottom. And choice D has a pattern of 2 triangles going one after another in between the checks. So this is my version, and if you have a better solution, please don't hesitate and make sure to share it in comments. And in case you're getting ready for the test, please make sure to check the links in the description of this video for additional resources. Here's one of my favorite questions where you test your mental skills as well as attention to details. You are presented with series of equations and you need to calculate the missing number. The first equation is glove plus glove equals 20. Second equation is glove plus two socks equals 38. Third equation is glove plus sock plus hat equals 39. And then the final equation where you have the missing number is one hat multiplied by one sock plus one glove equals the missing number. You need to calculate and select the missing number out of four possible choices. Choice A. 135, choice B, 220, choice C, 165, and choice D, 360. Take a close look to see if you can use your mental powers to calculate the missing number. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And if you have a better way to solve it by using your mental powers, please make sure to share in comments. Obviously, to solve this challenge, you need to find the numbers associated with each object. You need to find the numbers for glove, for sock, and for the hat. Let's look at each expression in more details. Since two gloves equals 20, one glove is equal to 10, because 20 divided by 2 equals 10. Let's go to the second expression. One glove and two socks equals 38. 
Let's do the math to calculate what's the value of the sock. 38 minus 10, which is the calculated value for one glove, and then divided by 2 equals 14, which means that numerical value associated with one sock is 14. Let's go to the third expression. One glove plus one sock plus one hat equals 39. We can calculate the value associated with hat. It equals 15 because 39 minus 10 minus 14 equals 15. Now we are ready to calculate the missing number. And to do that, we need to multiply 15 by 14, which would be equal to 10, and add 10. This is the value of hat multiplied by sock plus the value of glove. So the correct answer here is choice B, 220. Do you have a better way to solve it? Please make sure to show your observations and suggestions in comments. And now here's a surprise question for you to try your skills. Instead of giving you the answer, I am going to ask you to calculate the answer and post your solution in comments. You are presented with four shapes. Three shapes are fully populated with numbers, and the fourth shape has the middle number missing. You need to detect the pattern and calculate the missing number out of four different choices. Choice A, 22. Choice B, 23. Choice C, 25. And then last but not least, choice D, 24. Take a close look to see if you can do the calculations. And once ready, please make sure to post your answer in comments. This would allow me to share with you the final answer and give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck solving this challenge. Here is the famous four square triangle question that you frequently see on the test. You are presented with four triangles. In each triangle, there is a smaller triangle which breaks it down into four parts. Each part has a number. And in one small triangle, the number is missing. The first triangle has numbers 3, 2, 11, and number 1 in the middle. The second triangle has numbers 7, 4, 53, and then number 5 in the middle. The third triangle has numbers 11, 6, 127, and number 5 in the middle. And then there is a fourth triangle which has the missing number, but also has numbers 15, 8, and 7. Can you take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer? One tip for you is that you do not need to guess the number, but rather you need to calculate it. And you need to select the calculated number out of four different choices. Choice A, 225. Choice B, 232. Choice C, 233. And then last but not least, choice D, 240. Take a close look to see if you can solve this challenge. Are you ready or not? Regardless, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have guessed, to solve this challenge, you need to find the pattern. And the pattern is that if you add the middle number and the top number inside the small triangles, then put them into the bottom left corner of the triangle, and then square the bottom left corner number and add the top number. Seems a little complicated, and it is. The best way to understand it is to look at the example. Let's look at the first triangle. 2 plus 1 equals 3. 3 square equals 9. And 9 plus 2 equals 11. Armed with this information, let's find the missing number. First, let's add 8 plus 7, top and the middle numbers. 8 plus 7 equals 15. And you can confirm this calculation by looking at 15 in the bottom left corner of the triangle. 15 square equals 225. And then based on this information, to find the missing number, we need to add 8, which is the number in the top of the triangle, plus 255, which is the calculated number. So the final number will be 233. Now let me share with you some tips and tricks on how to better solve these types of challenges. You see that the triangles are of a different color. And colors here are only to confuse you. There is no other reasons the colors should be there, so you can completely ignore them. Another trick might be, typically when you look at these types of challenges, you limit your calculations to just adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing numbers. Keep in mind that there is always a possibility of square numbers and then square root of the number. And it's good to remember squares of particular numbers, probably up to 20. This way you can manipulate them in your head without using the calculator. 
Do you have any other tips and tricks on how to better solve these types of challenges? Please make sure to share in comments so we can all learn. Here's an amazing question to test your math skills. You need to determine how much money does clerk have. If you take a close look at the picture, you see that clerk is in the possession of dollar bills as well as the quarters. He is juggling dollar bills in the air and has quarters on the ground. Your answer will be one out of four different choices. Choice A, $12.25. Choice B, $16.25. Choice C, $18.25. And last but not least, choice D, $21.25. Please pause this video if necessary, do your counting, and post your answer in comments. This would allow me to give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here is the family relationship question which tests your memory and analytical skills. A group of people is gathered for a dinner. Bella is a daughter of George's brother. George's brother is Jack and Jack's wife is Emily. Emily has other children because Emily is also a mother of Anna. What is the relationship between Anna and Bella? And you're presented with four different relationship choices. Choice A – their nieces. Choice B – their sisters. Choice C – their cousins. And last but not least is choice D – they are friends. Do you know the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. And on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The correct answer is choice B – they are sisters. But why? Let's build a diagram to demonstrate the relationships between this group of people. Let's start with the statement that George has a brother, and George's brother is Jack. Jack also has a wife, Emily, and their couple, and Jack and Emily a family couple. We also know is that Bella is the daughter of George's brother, which means Bella is the daughter of Jack and Emily. We also learned that Anna is the daughter of Emily, which means Anna is daughter of Jack and Emily, which means that Bella and Anna are sisters. Do you have a better way to solve this challenge? Please make sure to post in comments. I get a lot of questions on how assessment tests are used in the hiring process. I would like to highlight three important areas companies use assessment tests. They use them for hiring and employment decisions. For example, hiring manager or HR might choose to test the candidate before hiring them to ensure a candidate is a good fit for the position. Second way to use it is grow talent inside the organization. For example, some companies use the test before making hiring decisions to promote the candidate. And last but not least, the third way to use it is to determine levels of motivation. For example, if your company is looking to implement a new system or technology, it might be helpful to assess people on their interests and motivation related to this technology. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's one of my favorite questions, which requires you to use your critical skills and imagination. You need to find the missing number, and you're presented with three different expressions. First expression is 13 multiplied by 13 equals 16. Second expression is 15 multiplied by 15 equals 36. And last expression, the one that's missing the number, is 17 multiplied by 17 equals missing number. You have four different choices to select from. Choice A, 56. Choice B, 64. Choice C, 72. And choice D, 81. Take a close look. Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? The answer is so simple, so when you learn it, you'll be very surprised. Because the correct answer, choice B, 64, is calculated very easily. The pattern here is that instead of using traditional numbers and calculations, you need to add the digits and then multiply them to get to the correct solution. So let's look at the first expression. 13 multiplied by 13 equals 16. In reality, you need to sum up 1 plus 3, then multiply at another expression 1 plus 3, which would be 4 multiplied by 4, which would be equal 16. 
For second expression, you need to add in parentheses 1 plus 5, multiplied another expression in parentheses 1 plus 5 would be equal 6 multiplied by 6, which would be equals 36. To calculate final expression, you need to add 1 plus 7, which would be equal to 8, multiplied by another expression 1 plus 7, which would be equal to 8 multiplied by 8, and it would be equal to choice B, 64. What was your experience solving this challenge? Please describe in comments. And if you're getting ready for the assessment test and need to get prepared, please make sure to check out the link to the ebook in the description of this video. As you might be well aware, one of the fastest way to get ready for the test is by practicing. And learning by practicing helps you understand key patterns used in a test to be prepared to anticipate different questions. There are only a limited number of patterns that can be used in a test, and you can learn about all of them by using ebooks for your practice. If you are in a rush and need to get for your test faster, please make sure to check out available resources at howtoanalyzedata.net. Our team of experts created this training materials based on the years of research and they kept up to date with the questions employers use on the current assessment tests. Thanks for your endorsement, support and patronage. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here is an amazing question which truly tests your analytical skills. You are presented with four sets of 3x3 three three matrices. Each matrix has nine numbers. And in matrix 4, there are three missing numbers that you need to calculate. You are presented with four different choices. Choice A, missing numbers might be 54, 68 and 105. Choice B, missing numbers might be 55, 78 and 97. Choice C is represented by the numbers 69, 80, and 115. And then choice D is 74, 88, and 125. Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe 20 to 30 seconds by pausing this video to see if you can come up with the solution. And as usual, I am moving forward to reveal you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I think it's very obvious and you probably recognize the pattern that's happening here. Numbers are calculated based on the formula. If we break down the matrix into columns A, B and C and then add numbers to the rows 1, 2 and 3, the formula can be summarized as B1 is calculated as A1 multiplied by 3 and C1 is calculated as B1 minus 4. So to calculate the missing numbers in row 1, we need to multiply 18 by 3, which would equal 54, and then 54 minus 4 equals 50. For row 2, the calculations will be 24 multiplied by 3 equals 72, and then 72 minus 4 equals 68. And last but not least, row 3 is calculated as 35 multiplied by 3 equals 105, and 105 minus 4 equals 101. So the correct answer is choice A, 54, 68, and 105. Here's the practice question for you to test your skills and knowledge. In this question, I'm not going to share with you the solution, but instead I'm going to ask you to solve this challenge on your own and post your answer in comments. This way I can give you my feedback. Take a close look to see if you can find the missing value. Missing value is represented by the question mark in a shape that contains numbers around the shape as well as one number inside. The numbers you see are 12, 42, 129 and then there is a number 3 in the middle. You have four different choices to choose from. Choice A, 229. Choice B, 287. Choice C, 352 and then choice D, 390. Take a close look to see if you can recognize the pattern and solve this challenge. And once ready, please make sure to post your answer in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here's an amazing question to test your business math skills. You're presented with the set of numbers in the compass-like figure and you need to add up all the numbers inside the shapes and then divide the sum by 2. You need to calculate what would be the result of this calculation. 
and you have four different choices. Choice A, 9. Choice B, 12. Choice C, 18. And choice D, 24. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time. Maybe pause this video and give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to do the calculations. I am pretty sure you figured it out, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The math here is pretty straightforward. You need to do 7 minus 3 plus 9 plus 5 in parentheses and then the divide the sum by 2. The result would be 18 divided by 2, which would be equal to 9. And this is my choice for the correct answer. What's interesting about this question is that there's a lot of way to get to the incorrect answer. For example, if you forget to divide by 2, there is an answer for that. Also, if you don't see the negative number and forget to divide by 2, there is a choice for that as well. And if you just forget the negative number, there is a choice for that as well. Which tells me that you have to read the instructions carefully. Hopefully you're one of those people who does it all the time and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now I have a question for you to test your skills. You're presented with the series of objects and you need to determine next object in the sequence. Please choose one of the following four choices. Choices A, B, C and D. Do you see the correct answer? Please make sure to post your version in comments. This would allow me to give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here's a very interesting question to test your spatial reasoning. You are presented with partial square and you need to find the missing shape to build the full square. You have four different choices to choose from to complete the square. Choices A, B, C and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. And on my end, I am moving forward to share with you the correct solution. As you might have figured out, the correct choice here is choice D. And to get to this answer, you need to look at the shape which fits perfectly to match the edges. Since this is the 5x5 five five square, choice D is the perfect shape because it matches perfectly to create a full square. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now I have something that maybe you were not expecting. Here's the practice question for you. You need to find the missing number and you're presented with four scales. Three scales have items on the left side and the number on the right side to make them equal. And four scale only has items on the left and missing number on the right in the form of question mark. You need to calculate the question mark out of four different choices. Choice A, 60. Choice B, 65. Choice C, 70. And then last but not least, choice D, 75. Take a close look. Maybe pause this video for 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Once you're ready, please make sure to post your answer in the comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here's one of my favorite questions where you presented with the sequence of shapes and you need to find the next shape in the sequence. What's unusual about this shape is that they resemble the molecules with electrons floating around the molecule and atom in the middle. You have four different choices to choose the missing shape. Choices A, B, C and D. Take a close look to see if you can find the missing shape. What you might consider doing is maybe pausing this video to see if you can look closely at the picture to have a better opportunity to find the missing shape. And on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Let's look closely at the shape here. The shape consists of small spheres and the number of spheres increases with every shape. First shape has one sphere, second shape has two spheres, and third shape has three spheres. So we can reasonably conclude that the fourth and missing shape will have four spheres. Well, this is not much help here because if you look at the choices A, B, C and D, they all have four small spheres. So our next step here to solve this challenge is to look at the bottom number. 
and to solve it, you need to find the formula to calculate the bottom number based on the incrementing number of spheres. For example, the formula to do bottom number calculation is 4 multiplied in parentheses number of spheres squared plus 1. So to calculate the bottom value for the first shape, we need to multiply 4 in parentheses 1 squared plus 1, which would be equal 8. For second shape, 4 multiplied in parentheses 1 plus 1 squared, which is 2 squared, which equals 4, plus 1 equals 4 multiplied by 5 equals 20. For the third shape, we need to multiply 4 in parentheses 3 squared plus 1 equals 4 multiplied by 10 equals 40. So to calculate the bottom number for the missing shape, we need to multiply 4 in parentheses 4 squared plus 1 equals 4 multiplied 16 plus 1 4 multiplied by 17 equals 68. This is why the correct choice here is choice C with bottom number 68. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of viewers on this channel ask me how to increase their IQ scores. Even though methods might be different from person to person, let me share with you three ways that help me to stay in shape. I love listening to classical music. I believe that this helps improve your analytical skills as well as spatial reasoning skills. Also, I like playing sports and I go to the gym to do vigorous exercises. I think this helps me to increase oxygen levels in the blood as well as to keep your brain more active. After a certain age, staying active helps you to increase your reactions as well as IQ. And last but not least, I like to stay hydrated. I drink a lot of green tea, Earl Grey tea, coffee and vitamin water throughout the day to help me stay energized. You can use these tips to prepare specifically for the test or to change your daily habits and stay sharper day after day. Do you have tips of your own on how to keep your brain in shape? Please make sure to share and comment so we can all learn. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's the phenomenal question to test your spatial reasoning skills. You need to select the matching combination which fits into this object. And you need to do the selection out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can find the perfect combo. Are you ready? Let me share with you my version of the solution. And I'm also going to share some tips and tricks question designers used here to confuse you. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I believe the correct answer here is choice B, and let me explain you why. If we rearrange shapes in the answer and try to fit them in one by one, we get into the perfect fit. Let's fit the first shape, second shape, and then the third shape. Do you see how it fits perfectly? Obviously, the trick is to mentally move the shapes, trying to fit them into position until you find the correct answer. And it's hard to do it during the test. Let me show you one little trick here, how you can eliminate some of the answers. Let's look closely onto the target object. If we count all the small squares, we get to the 13 squares. Let's do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 squares. But let's look at the choice A. Choice A has only 12 small squares, which would mean that choice A doesn't fit perfectly. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You see how easy it is to eliminate choice 12 by just counting small squares? Another trick question designers are used is colors. If you look closely, target shapes are of a different colors just to make it harder for you to visualize and find the right set of shapes. Which means that colors do not contribute to the pattern detection. Do you know any other tricks of solving these types of challenges? Please make sure to post them in comments. And now, I have a surprise question for you. For this question, I am not going to share the answer, but instead, you need to be able to come up with the solution on your own and post your answer in comments. You need to find the next item in the sequence, and you are presented with the sequence of three rainbows. Each object you see in the sequence has items on the top as well as squares at the bottom and you need to select the next item in the sequence out of four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look 
make sure to post your answer in comments and I'll give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. One of the questions I love the most are the ones with the missing shape. You're presented with 3x3 three three matrix. Eight of the nine matrix squares have shapes and there's one where shape is missing. You need to find the missing shape by looking at four different choices. Choices A, B, C and D. Please take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? Because I am moving forward to share with you my version. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Let me first add some references to the matrix. We will name columns A, B and C and we will name rows 1, 2 and 3. And you probably noticed here, but column C values represent shaded intersection of column A shapes. And considering this, column B values are just a distraction and do not influence answer in any way. For example, C1 shape is just a reflection of A1 shape with the cross shaded areas. Same with the relationship between the C2 and A2 shapes. Considering this, the correct choice here is choice B, where triangle and square are intersecting and there is a shaded gray area on the intersection. Do you have a better solution? Please make sure to post it in comments. If you find the content of the channel helpful, you can help us by becoming a member. For example, if you are getting ready for employment test and might wonder how you can download the value pack, we'll give you one reason to download and save. And this is by becoming a YouTube member. For example, if you become Platinum member, you can download Employment Assessment Test Preparation Bundle. We also frequently publish exclusive content for members only to help you stay sharp and get ready for the test. To become a member, all you need to do is to navigate to howtoanalyzedata.net slash membership. You can type the link directly in your browser or follow the link in the description of this video. Thank you for your endorsement, support and patronage. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Have you ever dreamed of finding the tree where money grows on the branches? Now is your opportunity. You're presented with three money trees and the fourth one is missing. You have four different choices to choose from to find the correct money tree. Choices A, B, C and D. Take a close look to see if you can find the right matching one. Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Amazing problem, isn't it? But to solve it, you need to take a close look at the tree. In this picture, each tree is different based on the number of leaves, number of branches and calculated value at the bottom of the tree. And to calculate the value, you need to multiply total number of leaves by total number of branches on the tree. For example, first tree has seven leaves and seven branches and the number at the bottom is calculated as seven by nine equals 63. Second tree has nine leaves and nine branches and 9 multiplied by 9 equals 81. Third tree is missing, but the fourth tree has 13 leaves and 9 branches, and 13 multiplied by 9 equals 117. So to calculate the missing value on the third tree, you need to multiply 11 leaves by 9 branches, and 11 multiplied by 9 equals 99. What's interesting here is that choices A B and C all have value at the bottom of 99. But the correct choice here is only choice B. Because only choice B has 11 leaves and 9 branches. And multiplying 11 by 9 equals actually 99, which matches the formula. So the correct choice here is choice B. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is a rather unexpected question you might frequently see on the test. You need to determine during which period revenue declined and you're presented with the profit and loss chart that covers periods from 2018 to 2024. On the chart, 
you see three lines representing revenue, expenses, and taxes. And you need to select the final answer out of four different choices. Choice A – the period between 2018 and 2020. Choice B – the period between 2019 and 2020. Choice C – the period between 2020 and 2021. And choice D – the period between 2023 and 2024. Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. I am pretty sure that by now you found it, but I am going to move forward and reveal you my version of the solution anyway. And if you know the better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The way I see it is that the revenue goes down between the period of 2020 and 2021, which is represented by the blue line. In 2020, the revenue was about 9.5 units, and then in 2021, it went down to approximately 8.5 units. All other highlighted periods in the question indicate revenue increases. Did you see it differently? Please make sure to post your answer in comments. As you might be well aware, the fastest way to learn and prepare for the test is by doing hands-on practice exercises. This is why we prepared practice materials for you to download so you can learn faster. All you need to do is to navigate to howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. You can type this link directly in your browser or follow the link in the description of this video. Thank you for your endorsement, support, and patronage. And now, let's continue to get you ready for the test. One of my favorite questions is where you need to calculate the missing value. You're presented with three equations, and in fourth equation, the result is missing. The first equation is 23 multiplied by blue parrot plus a red parrot equals 41. Second equation, 19 plus blue parrot plus blue parrot equals 31. Third equation is 10 multiplied by blue parrot plus red parrot equals 72. And last but not least expression is 26 plus red parrot multiplied by blue parrot equals missing value. You need to select missing value out of four possible choices. Choices A, 83. Choice B, 90. Choice C, 98. And choice D, 107. Take a close look to see if you can calculate the answer. And on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments so we can all learn. For simplicity, let's create variables. We will use B for blue parrot and we will use R for red parrot. So the first step here is to create and solve an expression. And the easiest one to solve is the second expression with two blue parrots. 19 plus B plus B equals 31, which means the 2B equals 31 minus 19, which equals 12. Once we solve it, we see that B, blue parrot, equals 6. Knowing the value for blue parrot, we can solve first expression. 23 plus B plus R equals 41, which means that 23 plus 6 plus missing variable R equals 41. After the calculations, R equals 41 minus 29 equals 12. Technically, we don't even need a third expression, because having first and second expression allows us to solve both variables. But let's use third expression to verify that our calculations are correct. 10 multiplied by blue parrot B plus red parrot R equals 10 multiplied by 6 plus 12. 10 multiplied by 6 equals 60. 60 plus 12 equals 72. Now it's time to calculate the missing number. 26 plus red parrot multiplied by blue parrot equals 26 plus 12 multiplied by 6 equals 26 plus 72 equals 98. So the correct answer is choice C, 98. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own and now know how to solve similar problems on the test. Here's an amazing question which tests your analytical skills. You're presented with the set of diamonds. Each diamond has other objects inside. And you need to find the missing diamond, which is diamond number four. 
you have four different choices to choose from. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the right solution. Are you ready? Do you have the answer? Let me move forward and share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As with a lot of other questions, the key to answer this question is to detect the pattern. If you look closely, you will see the diamonds filled with the arrowheads, triangles, which are moving in a different direction. The direction of the arrowheads rotates 90 degrees clockwise with every next shape in the pattern. For example, in the first shape, they move to the 12 o'clock position of the clock. Then they move to the 3 o'clock position and then to the 6 o'clock. So if you detected this pattern in the missing shape, the arrowheads should be at the 9 o'clock position. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If the content was helpful, please give us a like and consider subscribing. This is the way for you to tell us that you need more content like this and we'll make sure to deliver it for you in the future. For links and resources referenced in this video, please check the description. You can also go directly to our website howtoanalyzedata.net to find what you're looking for and download the materials. We really thank you for your endorsement, support and patronage of this channel. Please leave feedback, suggestions or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.